We're in Discovery Bay, California. It's actually a farming community out here on the Delta. So it's a water community. Uh, moved out here about four years ago. Always uh, loved the water, loved boating. And um, all the time we ended up boating, we ended up here at Discovery Bay at my friend. So we just finally one day said, let's make the move. Made it and it's been probably the best decision we've made in a long time, especially as far as the writing goes, you know, we've got to create a little studio at home, which has really helped the process and inspiration for getting to work on it. It's just, it's been a life changer, but when you're at home in your own element, it's, it's comfortable, you know? It just made the process smooth, so. I'm ready to write two, three more records. You guys ready for that? <laughs> I'm ready to go, man. <laughs> you know, when I met Tiffany and we moved, um, my first thought was, yeah, let's move to Dublin, where all my friends live. And she didn't think that was a very good idea. So she kept me out of Dublin, and we moved to uh, Hayward in San Leandro, which is over the hill, a little closer between San Francisco and, and Dublin. So we spent about 15 years out there. and. You know, that's about as close as I got to living to the, to the city out there. At some point uh, in 2000, um, I was jamming with the guys in Sadis, actually, and they lived in Antioch, California. And uh, we decided the prop real estate market was good, and we said it's a good time to sell. And, um, you know, was, I think I've told the story before, but a real estate agent knocked on my door. Um, we ended up selling the house and moving, and right when we moved into the new house, I found out I had cancer. So it was kind of this, you know, kismet that I met the real estate agent and got me to move to Antioch. And that was a whole different, you know, change of my life at that point on, you know, 2001. It's, uh, it's definitely different from where I grew up over the hill in Dublin and San Leandro, Hayward area. Um, it's a lot slower out here, it's a little country living. And I got closer to the Delta out here and now I just keep getting further away and here we are, you know, three houses later. <laughs> Hopefully the last one, but it's awesome being here. It's just uh, inspirational. You know, when I come off the road, I got a lot to do around here. A lot of boating, uh, golf's down the street. My uh, One of my best friends lives down the street, so we, uh, we hang out a lot. Well, I got the most vicious um, guard dogs, attack dogs, very vicious. They will, they will detach an ankle in a matter of seconds. They will bite your toes off faster than a shark. But these dogs, I love them to death, but I have, I had four dachshunds, and they're miniature dachshunds. I had, I got to, right when I beat cancer, I decided to get two dogs, and those were my first two, and you know, I never had dachshunds, but they were, they're the, one of the best breeds, and you know, your pal. So we rescued one, uh, Coco brought her into the family and, and Ramsey's, he's uh, the last two left. But, you know, they got me trained. I, I, I think I had them trained, but they got me <laughs> on a routine now where as soon as I get in the morning or they go use the restroom, they're at the closet saying, hey, hey, give me, give me a treat. And that's their deal, so, you know. But I'm a sucker, you know, because There'll be a day when I can't give them that, so I spoil them to death, you know, but they're, I, believe me, no one can ever sneak up on this house, ever, ever. Um, they'll hear a pin drop out front and they're up and barking. So they're, they're good protectors. They're very uh, defensive of our house. We take them out for a walk and they don't bark at anybody. They're just like, they don't care. As soon as they get home, it's, they're on defense. It's just the weirdest thing, but I love them to death. We're, we're definitely dog and animal people. Usually my day just starts up first thing is coffee and um, sit down and right away start checking emails to hopefully catch everybody in European time before they leave the office. Really try to dive into emails, get that knocked out first thing in the morning because it's an all day process. There's emails all day long, but we just knocked the important zone out and then, you know, basically got to get, especially this time of year, you know, we're gearing up for touring. 
So, you know, I've got my routine to go out and ride my bike. You know, do, uh, do a little sweating in the garage on the bike, uh, which is killer. <laughs> awesome for the lungs. Um, you know, and then it all depends if it's summer or winter or, you know, what time of the year it is. Um, but I find myself doing, if it's summer, it's a lot of boating. You know, I mean, as soon as we're done with mail and exercise and getting a shower, it's like, all right, you done? You got any more email? Nope, let's go. And we're on the boat and we're out of here. Well, growing up, it was more land sports, baseball, basketball, football. My father was a, a baseball coach, so we all had to play sports. And we weren't in school, in the summertime we are playing sports. Boating never came in until after high school. A friend of mine had a boat and, that, and the Delta. We had him, took it out here in the Delta and that was my first experience of, wow, look at all these waterways out here. And I never knew about the Delta, you know, till then. Um, but, you know, I grew up as a teenager around 14 wanting to ride motorcycles. I rode Harleys, you know, if I actually, those are Hondas when I first, my first motorcycle around 14. I uh, had a Honda and two Hondas and had a, that's the days when you'd make them like choppers, you know, do long forks and everything. And then uh, I think after the very first record, you know, got, got a little money and decided to buy a Harley and upgrade and that was it. After I bought my first Harley, I was hooked and um, loved Harleys ever since then until Harley-Davidson started popping up in every city, dealers and people buying bikes that just bought them because they thought it was cool, but really didn't know how to ride them. I found myself as a defensive driver on bikes, and um, we've been riding for a long time and never had an accident, but I seen how people were looking at motorcycles parting traffic. You know, they'd pull in your lane and they'd try to cut you off, and, and I was like, man, this isn't fun anymore. So, and at that point, that that's when I had bought the boat. Too. So Tiff said to me one day, what are we doing? What are you doing? You know, you're going to put on your leathers and go hang out with a bunch of bearded bikers or you're going to put some beer in the cooler and go hang out with a bunch of girls with boobs and bikinis. I'm like, I'm an idiot. You know, <laughs> this is a no brainer. Man. Yeah, you're right. What am I doing? So at that point, I was, went with that philosophy and I just took the boat and I ended up selling the bike years later. I didn't ride it for a few years and decided that's it, and I have no desire to ride the bikes anymore, and ever since then it's been boats all the way. And so, it's boats and boobs, that's that's our little slogan when we're ready to go out, you know. <laughs> a lot of summers go down like that, a lot, a lot of time on the boat. Um, and on the golf course as well, I mean, we live, you know, a minute away from the course, so I'm a member down there, and I get out there and chop up the grass out there as best I can. Um, I dig that a lot. That that to me is a time when I just I, I get out there and I play my music. I, I go out there when nobody's around either because I don't like you know it's it's a country club, so there's a lot of people, a lot of older members there, and I just do my stand, do my own thing. So I have music and I take my time and I check my emails and I'm I don't even keep score. I just go out there just to get my mind straight because it's quiet. No one's around me, I got my music, check my mail, don't have to talk to anybody. And I really enjoy that. And um, I spend a lot of time actually on the course. So it all depends what time of year again it is. If the summers here where I live are very hot, so I try not to stay on the course or I go out there early in the morning and then it's boating on the weekend. And then, and then every Friday we got our fuck yeah Friday, which my buddies all around and whoever's got boats they ditch work and we all get on our boats and we all go meet at this bar in Union Point and, and fuck yeah, Friday. And so we carry that tradition out here in Discovery Bay. When I'm touring, I'm really focused on touring and focused on business and, you know, I even go as far as, I, I don't even smoke weed anymore on tour. I just focused on the task at hand. So when I get home, I really turn it off, you know, I'm really just, I don't sing until it's time to get ready for our next trip. I really get far away from it, jump right back into my weed. <laughs> you can get bored hanging out and having a lot of time on your hands, you gotta find out what to do or figure it out. I wish, it'd be awesome if we were like 
the old days, but it's, it's just a dream. If we all lived around each other and got to jam and just, hey, let's go jam today, you know, and go meet you at the studio and just spend a day jamming. You know, we haven't done that so long, so that those are like things that are be like sick. And I always wanted to do a record like that, you know, so let's go to the mountain somewhere and rent a place and just get creative and try something different and all of us be in the same room and chop it out, you know. I, I think it still needs to be done, so we'll see if we I, you know, I talk about it and it always ends up being, that sounds like a good idea, but it never pans out. But there's so much more we can do as far as creation, you know, as far as making music and trying different things and trying to be inspired different ways because we always want the records to be different. We always want to keep evolving as writers and artists and performers and I think we have, but, you know, we want to try to maybe try something different and be awesome.